Hello again, and welcome back to Lost in Translation. My name is Nico. We are looking at this week's Torah portion, Vaira, right? And we are going to take a look at the 10 things you will miss when you're reading the Torah only in English. So let's start off right away. There is a visitation. Right? There's these three men who come to visit Abraham, and we come to understand that they are angels because Hashem is involved in the conversation as well. Right? But before we get too involved in that, I want to compare this visitation that Abraham has with the same angels who visit Lot just later on in this story. Okay? So we'll wait till we get to the Lot visitation to compare the two. There's a lot going on in this portion. So we'll move on to number two. Number two, she laughed. While the visitation is happening, um, Sarah overhears the men speaking to to her, to her husband, to Abraham, and they say, ah, your wife's gonna have a baby, right? And uh, she hears this. Sarah had ceased to have the way of women. She wasn't menstruating anymore. She's 90 years old. She doesn't believe that she's gonna have a baby. And she laughed within herself or at herself. Um, within is maybe better. Um, so, after I have become worn out, I will have smooth flesh, smooth skin, right? And my master, my husband is old, is old, okay? And now there's a difference between Abraham's laughing. When he heard that he's going to have Yitzhak, he, he dropped to the ground. He dropped to his face and he laughed. He rejoiced. Now we have Sarah de- uh, laughing out of doubt and we know that she's wrong she knows she's wrong when when hashem the lord right uh the 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 lord says oh uh, why is uh why is she she laughing right here we go lord said to abraham right uh, is it really true right this 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 is this really true this umnam reminds us of the word emuna which is faith right um and she's lacking it and so in response to this She lies, just like we've seen lies before in front of Hashem, and they don't work out well. And she lies, just like before, where the hiding happened in the Garden of Eden because they were afraid. She denied, I did not laugh, because she was afraid. And he says, no, you laugh, right? And that's the end of it. That's the end of the visitation. So there's no double standard here. There's laughter and rejoicing. There's laughter and doubt, lack of faith. Okay, number three. The three men got up. So yeah, right after this denial situation, right? Uh, And the men arose from there. Vaikamu, arise, misham. Excuse me. Right? Well, they, they rose and they looked upon the face. They, they looked at the face of, uh, of Sodom. This face. Okay, so we have this thing where ups and downs, ups and downs. Sodom is 
down in, in spiritual position from, from Abraham. If we remember, Lot chose Sodom because it was lush and green and well watered like Mitzrayim. It was below the spiritual level that they had just risen up out of and Lot chose to go down into it. Whereas Abraham remained higher without the curse. So we're going to see this system of ups and downs continue throughout the Torah. Okay, number four. There is this amazing scene where we see just how special of a character Abraham is, his quality, this quality of Abraham. Um, in that Hashem reveals to Abraham what he's going to do to, uh, to Sodom, right? So this shows a fundamental change in the character of the biblical protagonist, right? Noah is told, gonna wipe out the world, build me an ark, put all the animals in it, take your family, I'll take care of you. Noah says, you got it. And this is, of course, Elohim talking to Noah, giving him these orders. And eventually Hashem is the one that's taking care of him. But Noah doesn't seem to care about all the people that are going to be wiped out. Whereas here, there's this wicked city like Egypt, right? In a low spiritual state that's so opposite to Hashem that he's decided to destroy it. And Abraham goes out of his way to confront the creator of the universe and say, wait, what if there are 50 righteous people there? You can't destroy the whole city if there are righteous people there. And eventually down at, you know, 45, 40, 30, 20, 10. And Hashem says, okay, listen, if there's 10 people, I won't destroy and that's the end, right? And at the, you know, and 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 Abraham rises up from his place, rises up to speak to Hashem, and afterwards he returns to his place, right? So here we go. And the Lord departed, and he finished speaking to 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 Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. This is, it's very interesting that uh, we have this continual ups and downs in the motions of, of biblical protagonists when they are in conversation with the creator, with the divine. Okay, we could say that this is the main event of the, of the portion, but it's not really. Um, it's a climax. And we've got some crazy things that are happening here. So we're going to look at number five. Comparing the two visitations, Abraham's and Lot's. Right? So real quick, we'll go back and take a look at the previous visitation for some details. Okay. So... Abraham lifts up his eyes. He sees three men. Um, he runs toward them and he tells them, please uh, come and uh, don't pass by. Um, Abraham is sitting in his tent and he says, okay, uh, come and uh, wash your feet and relax. And I'll feed you and all this. He goes to Sarah. He says, make, make sweet cakes, make nice cakes out of kneaded flour. Right, he tells his his youth, maybe this was uh, Ishmael, we don't know, uh, to go and kill like the the best animal they can to make a feast for these men, and uh, they say yes, sure, we'll come on in, and we have these blessings, this good news about uh, a new life that's going to come into the world, Itzach. Uh, we have a little bit of a, of an issue with Sarah, but that's the whole thing, right? Doesn't seem like too much of an ordeal. Okay, there are three angels that visited Abraham. Now there are two. Ah, now we're told that these are absolutely angels, right? 
the Avira Shani HaMelechim. Melechim can also be messengers, right? It's a similar word. But these, these two angels, what happened to the, the other one? Well, we learn in Judaism that each angel has one task. So the three angels arrived at, uh, Noah, at, at Abraham's house, and one angel's job was to tell him about Yitzhak. And his job was done, and he, he's gone. So these are the two angels that remain to deal with Sodom and Gomorrah. So one to destroy everything, and the other one to save Lot. They've got these jobs to do. Okay? So now we see that Lot is actually, he's sitting at the gate of Sodom, not at his tent. He doesn't have a tent. He lives in the city. So he's at the gate of this wicked place, right? And he also prostrates himself face to the ground. And he says, please come to your servant's house, stay overnight and wash your feet. It's backwards, hospitality and wash your feet. Some interesting difference there. Um, and then get up and go away in the morning, right? And they refuse him. No, we're going to stay in the street. Don't do that. You don't know the city, the city, right? We've got this whole thing where, where, you know, they, they hadn't, they hadn't gone to bed yet. And the people are coming and they're smashing on the door and they want to, uh, they want to know these men. Right, this was a. This is what Saddam was about. This is where we get the term, um, and instead of like in the visitation of Abraham, who finds out he's going to be receiving a son, instead Lot is offering to give up his daughters for the benefit of these men. There's not a lot of, I mean, where's the moral fiber in this? He's being a good guy by offering his daughter to this mob, his two daughters to this mob. It's, it's, it's symbolic. There's something going on between these, this juxtaposition between the two visitations, right? And there's this whole confrontation between the two angels and the population. They're struck blind. They tell them, okay, we're going to destroy everything. you got to get out of here. So instead of them leaving Lot in peace, they're ushering Lot away. He's being deprived of, uh, of, his, of his life in Sodom, um, and he's being told to go away. This is a very big difference these these two these two visitations completely different almost polar opposites from how Hashem is visiting the blessed one and how he is visiting the cursed one. Okay, so number six, Lot asks to go to this small city instead of going to the mountain. Okay. Okay, the angels are trying to get Lot out of town, and he he's, doesn't want to go. He, he's, he's dragging his feet. The angel's like, you got to go. The sun's coming up. We got our job to do. So what happens is he's told to go up on the mountain, and he says, I cannot flee to the mountain lest the evil overtake me and I die. And look, now there's this, there's a city near to flee to, and it's small, right? And this is, and he said, is it, is it not small, right? And this is, and send me to this small place. It's a restricted, it's a, it's, it's a, we well, there's this idea of katnut and gadlut in Kabbalah, right? And so he's asking to go to a smaller state, uh, to not go up onto the higher spiritual level, because if the evil, if the curse is linked to him, then he'll die. He won't be able to sustain the uh, the higher spiritual position without his egotistical desire, right? And so the angels say, okay, fine, go to, go to Tsar. Tso, that's the name of this, of this city. Tsar with a tzaddik, not a, not a, z, but a tz. Okay. 
and uh, and this reminds us that uh, that uh, you know that he had said that the uh, that the the city was small. Okay, means R. And uh, okay, so he goes there, and throughout this, something happens, and his wife turns and looks at the disaster and she's transformed into pillar into a pillar of salt right and well you know now that his wife who's now treated much more harshly than sarah we don't even know what her name is right she's killed her daughters his daughters run off with him everything he knows is destroyed and eventually now that the evil that his wife is representing his the female side of him is no longer is no longer connected to him now he can go up onto the mountain where other things happen okay so number seven yeah here's where we get to see some incest in the bible okay so Lot has gone up from Tsar, the small place, and he went up onto the mountain, right? And his two daughters were with him, right? Now, he was afraid to stay in Tsar. So he thought, okay, in this small state, I, I, I can't survive there either. I have, to, I have to grow. I have to go up. Now, here, the daughters are looking to preserve life, right? For them, the whole world is ended. Right? And they think that the only man left on the on the planet is their father, and they they get him drunk, and they both lie with him, and they are they conceive children, both of them sons. So okay, we have this uh, this miracle birth of the old woman who's going to have this one blessed son, and now we've got this profane conceptions this in, these incestual conceptions where there are two nations that are born out of this right and we can see through the the names of this of the uh of the sons right the elder uh bore a son and she named him moab right moab Av is father this mem in the front of it lets us know that she's calling him from my father, from, from father, right? That's where this baby came from. So she's not ashamed of what's happened at all. Whereas the second daughter seems to be a little bit more uh, reserved in her name. She calls her son's name uh, Ben Ami. Ben Ami means like son of my nation, son of my people. Right? So she's kind of hiding the incestuous origin of this son where her sister with Moab is not. Now, these two nations become antagonistic to, uh, to Israel uh, in the future. But what's very interesting is that the great grandmother i believe root the great grandmother of king david is from moab and so we finally see later in the tanakh that the the two opposites of lot and avraham are reconciled through the house of israel and root converting to 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 judaism and being the uh, the foundation for the king, the uh, the royal house of David, right? So there's so the Messiah comes from this correction of the curse through this Moab, the nation of Moab. Right? Pretty cool. Okay, number eight. um there is this incident another famine or kind of another sojourn but Abraham doesn't go back to israel but he does lower his state again he goes down to the sea he goes down to the south 
of Israel, and he sojourns amongst the Philistines. Okay, so he's gone down uh, to, to be with the Philistines, and he does the same thing that he did with Egypt. But now remember, this is Abraham and Sarah, not Abram and Sarai. They, they have a new quality, and they've not got, they can't go down to Egypt again. They're incapable of it because their quality doesn't allow them to. But they've still gone down to a lower level, and he's telling her, tell them that you're my sister so they don't kill me. Um, the king uh, of uh, the king Abimelech, he uh, right is like father king Avi Abimelech. Um, he he takes Sarah so that she should be uh, his wife. Hashem intervenes. He sees that he's stricken. He gives Sarah back. And unlike Egypt, he says, he says, well, why did you do this? And, and, uh, and Abraham says that, uh, I know that you, that, uh, there is no fear of God in this place. And I, you know, and that you're going to kill me for my wife. And, uh, then he explains that in fact, she is my sister. She's the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. So here, Abimelech's reaction, instead of throwing him out, is to say, here's my land. Wherever it pleases you, you may dwell. He invites him to stay. And they end up with a covenant. And there's an incident with a well. And we need to talk about water in the Torah sometimes. Because water in the Torah is significant. But anyway, here's this another incident of down into a, uh, a lower state, hiding the relationship with his wife. And, you know, the, the Abimelech's different, uh, different approach to how to handle Abraham. He sees that he's blessed and he asks him to stay within his land. Okay. So, number nine. Ishmael ridicules Itzah. Let's take a look. Okay, so Sarah's had the baby. They're having a party that he's being weaned. Abraham circumcises him in eight days. Abraham was 100 years old when Itzah was born. So remember Itzah, right? In laughter or rejoicing, maybe. Right, and Sarah said, "God has made joy for me, well, or laughter of me, right? Because it just depends on how you're going to render these three letters that remind us of Yitzchak, right? And because everyone who hears will rejoice or laugh at me, right?" Itzach, right? So this is, you know, Chabad's take on this is that this is a this is a great blessing, and the whole world will rejoice over Sarah instead of laughing at her. But you know, it, it could be. It, it's just that these ideas are linked to the name of her son, which is spelled identically, just a, a little bit different vowelization. Okay. Um, but here, Sarah saw the son of Hagar. Remember, the Ger, Hagar, Hamitzrit. And he was making Mary Mitzachek. Yeah, I want to find it here in the art scroll just because, I mean, it it's... Be rendered differently than make me marry. Mocking. In fact, we see the same words being used to describe Joseph later on when uh, when the when his master's wife Potiphar's wife accuses him of trying to uh, seduce her. He makes sport. Right. We have a similar 
similar verb here. And so here, this is maybe mocking, making merry. Mm, there, I don't know. Uh, thing is, is it's connected again back to this name of the other son of Itzach. Okay, and so she's saying that she doesn't want him to uh, to inherit with my son with Itzach, and that's it. She's she's a. Uh, Hagar, the outsider, and her son, Ishmael, are driven off. And there's this other episode where God hears uh, the crying of Ishmael and, uh, and saves him. But it's going to have to wait for another time. Because we're going to get to the real climax of the portion right now. And that's known as the Akeda. This is when... Avraham uh, is told to sacrifice his son on Mount Moria, right? So let's take a closer look. Okay. First, we need to understand who's talking to who here, right? Vahi achahadavarim ha'elei Nisa et Avraham. Vayomer live Avraham veomer hineni. Okay, so now we've got Elohim speaking to Avraham. This isn't Hashem. Okay, and he's going to say, okay, take your son, your only one, the one that you love. Itzach. Slowly getting him ready to understand. You need to take Itzach and ve'lech lecha el eret hamoria. When we see this in Hebrew, this is going to remind us of the last Torah portion, lech lecha, lech lecha el ha'aretz. Asher Arecha. This is very significant. This is a huge conceptual link between Hashem telling Avram to go to the land that I will show you and Elohim telling Avraham now you are connected to, to Hashem. You have the hey in your name. And now you need to come close to Elohim because you're too far on the side of mercy. You are too, you are too connected to this aspect of love and kindness and mercy. Now you got to deal with the left side, the, the judgment, right? And El Eretz Hamoria. So... This Moria, this Liyah, this, this is very similar to the land I will show you over here, right? To the land that Arecha, right? Except that instead of being the land, it's, it's you know, el, land of, the, 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 the article switches to this name to Moria, right? So we're more specific. It isn't the land, it's a land that is Moria. So you wanna see, you gotta come to this place, right? And so he's told to, uh, to take fire, to, to, to take his son, and he goes with, the, with his, his youths and he goes three days and he finds this place, um, and there's the whole conversation where here's the fire, here's the uh, here's the the knife. Where is the offering? <laughs> well, the offering again is to come close. So he needs to come close to Elohim, right? And he even says, Elohim, Yare lo hase la ola meni vialchu. Right? They went together and they went together. 
We don't know who these they are. We're supposed to assume that it's Abraham and Yitzhak, but maybe these, these they are Elohim and Abraham. We have this coming closer through the offering, through the Ola, Lola, right? Okay, and the time comes. And here in English, it's written an angel of God, Vaikra Alive. Uh, Hashem Hashem is intervening now Abraham Abraham he named before he's saying here I am to Elohim but now he's saying here I am to this angel of Hashem and Hashem is canceling the deal loving kindness and mercy is coming in and saying yes you're right the, the part of Elohim recognizes that Yitzhak shouldn't exist. He was born from a 100-year-old father and a 90-year-old mother. He shouldn't exist. It's not right. It's not balanced. It's not just. It's not the way nature is supposed to be. And Elohim, and excuse me, and, and Hashem comes in and interrupts this with his loving kindness. And... The whole thing is canceled, right? And Avraham is blessed even more because he has come close to Elohim. He was willing to do with the, with what was just and right. And loving kindness, uh, the aspect of loving kindness came in to, to interrupt. And through this drawing close to Elohim as well as Hashem, now he's received I mean, he's close to both aspects of the creator because they're not two different gods. They're just two different aspects. He's drawn close to both these aspects and he's received greater blessings because of it, right? Um, so, Vayasa Avraham et Anayim Vayra. Vayar, excuse me, Vayar, he saw, right? Uh, to see the, uh, the, the, the animal, the, the ram caught in the, in the, in the thorns. And Vaikra Abraham Shem Hamakom Hahu Hashem Yere. So all this connection to Moria and seeking okay even through the aspect of justice eventually he comes to see hashem even more clearly right and by myself i have sworn says the lord says hashem that because you have done this thing and you did not withhold your son your only one i will bless you greatly multiply your seed and, uh, as the stars in the heavens and the sands on the seashore. He's not compared to dust anymore. He's compared to stars and sand on the sea, a connection to water, right? It's, uh, it's, it's very significant. And after this, uh, you know, we, we, we split ways. Abraham returns to his youths. Yitzhak goes with him or no? I, uh, maybe Abraham is going back to Yitzhak being one of the youths after this conversation, this blessing with Hashem. It's, it's ambiguous. And, uh, and then we find out that there is a match for Yitzhak back in the Nahor where, uh, where Abraham comes from. And that's the end. Right? So... I hope that you're finding this interesting, that it's helpful, that it's demonstrating that there's something more than just disconnected stories happening here, that it's all interwoven, that the themes are running through from one portion to the next. Ah, this is what we're missing if we're not reading the Torah in Hebrew. Okay? So, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next week for the next exciting portion of